Cyborg is a very popular character who was famous in the Teen Titans show and comics for many years, before being elevated to a full-time member of the Justice League in the comics and films, possibly because he could easily be turned into merchandising and toys. Now, over the years, he's had slightly different origin stories, but this video is going to focus on the origin story told in the film Justice League War. We're first introduced to Cyborg in his fully human form as the star quarterback Victor Stone, or as the fans call him, Victory Stone, for fairly obvious reasons. Victor Stone is a legend for his football skills, but his father, Silas Stone, isn't quite so proud of his prowess on the field. His father is a super genius scientist who's never been to one of his son's football matches, as he doesn't really respect it. In that world, throwing a football is a joke! This is something that his son has issue with, as football is his whole life. I know how busy you are. I just really thought you'd keep your promise this time. By the way, we won tonight. After one night, he finally has enough of his dad ignoring him and goes to the lab where his father works to confront him about it. You're never gonna come to one of my games, are you? No. His father is studying an object given to him by the Flash, as they're trying to work out exactly what the object is. Dozens of tests and we're still unable to learn a single thing. The device, of course, is alien technology called a mother box, a sort of supercomputer that is sentient and can control other tech, and it can also create boom tubes which allow instantaneous transport to pretty much anywhere in the universe. And it has a lot of other abilities that are very undefined, but basically they have a god level of power as they're able to control objects on an almost subatomic level. But anyway, tired of his dad constantly ignoring him and feeling like his dad just doesn't care about him at all, as all Silas Stone seems to care about is his work, Victor grabs the mother box in anger. This thing is more important to you than your own son, Victor, stop! Unfortunately, the device then activates a boom tube and destroys most of Cyborg's body. The energy of the mother box mixes with his flesh, which is the same energy that turns creatures into parademons by breaking down their flesh and merging it with machinery. The damage of course is fatal as the energy is eating away at Victor Stone's body, and the only way to save his life is to try and fix the damage by replacing the destroyed tissue with metal, so that's what his father does. Promethium skin grafts? His body could reject them completely. It won't! I've injected the nanites. He takes his son to the Red Room, which has the most advanced tech there is on Earth, with pieces from all over the planet, and the tech that is there is either from the future, alien, or just made by ridiculously clever supervillains. But in any case, all the technology there is more advanced than anything else on the planet, and by merging it with his son's body, Silas hopes to save his son's life. The plan, unfortunately, doesn't work, and Victor Stone dies. Then, somehow, he comes back to life. Most likely the energy that creates parademons merged his flesh with the nanites and the technology in the Red Room. So rather than destroying Victor's mind and turning him into a parademon slave like the energy normally does, it instead lets him keep his mind and free will and just merges his body with the machinery in the room. For those who don't know, parademons are the soldiers of Darkseid. Darkseid is a dictator who rules over an alien planet and he invades other planets and steals the people and then uses his technology to convert the people into parademons. Basically, this means taking people and merging their flesh with machinery to create a superpowered army that are enslaved to him. But in this case, rather than destroying Victor's mind and turning him into a parademon slave, like the energy normally does, it instead lets Victor keep his mind and free will and just merges his body with the machinery in the room. This is also most likely due to the fact that the Red Room has different technology than Dark Sides. So without the slaving technology and programming that a parademon would normally undergo, all that happens is that Victor's body merges with the tech, turning him into a cyborg. No one is quite sure how this happened though, which is why the government doesn't just create an army of cyborgs. At first, the tech fused with him seems crude, but this is just because it's not finished changing him. As he fights the parademons that are attacking his father's lab, his body grabs more and more technology from around the room and fuses it with his body, giving him weapon capabilities, and it even later fuses him with a mother box. He now has super strength, flight, white noise cannons, and all the powers of a mother box. What's happened to me? Your mind is now a quantum computer, son. As his mind is now a computer, he is also able to download information from the mother box that reveals Darkseid's plan to take over the planet. Basically, there is a lot of mother boxes all around the world that are there to bring the alien Darkseid's army of parademons from Apocalypse, which is his alien planet, to Earth, in order to conquer our planet. Other heroes are fighting the aliens, and so Cyborg searches them out to give him the intel he has downloaded about the enemy. I know their plan. They're terraforming the Earth. 
And with his help, especially in using mother boxes to send the aliens back to their planet, they are able to take down Darkseid and rescue the abducted civilians. And that is Cyborg's origin in the film. It looks as though Cyborg will have some similarities to this origin in the Justice League live action movie, as Batman vs Superman saw Victor Stone injured, and his father then fusing his body with a mother box to save his life. So that part at least will likely be the same. I must admit I do really like this origin, at least for the most part it's pretty good. But the whole thing with Cyborg being so desperate for his father's love and his dad not caring that much about him, at least until he becomes a cyborg, kind of pisses me off a bit. Obviously it's not quite that simple, but the fact that Cyborg just forgives his dad for years of neglect so easily, well, it seems a little too clean cut for me. But that may just be to my own issues that I have with my parents. But what do you think? Do you like this origin? And how different do you think it'll be to the live action film of Justice League? And if you're watching this far enough in the future and the film has already been released, which origin do you think was better? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that's helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.